Hey, this is Nick Sanchez. You're watching the Arkham Rewind Show on Racing News Now. Hello and welcome to the Arkham Menard Series Rewind Show. I'm Garth Allen. This is Racing News Now. And today we're talking about the 2021 General Tire 150 from the Charlotte Motor Speedway. But first, I want to remind you that we are in our hashtag race to 1K. So if this is your first time here, consider going down below to hit that subscribe button. It is free to do. The quicker we get to 1,000 subscribers, the quicker YouTube will let us do mobile live streaming which will improve both the quality and quantity of coverage we're able to give you from the track. We will be back at the track this coming weekend at Mid-Ohio for the ARCA race there, and then for numerous other races throughout the summer. So the quicker we get to 1,000 subscribers, the quicker you get mobile live streams from the track. So if you haven't already, consider hitting that button for me. So let's talk about the General Tire 150, 100 laps, 150 miles around the mile and a half, Charlotte Motor Speedway, Concord, North Carolina. And if we're being honest, this was such a boring race. There was nothing happening in this race whatsoever. And you'll have races like that. Not every race is going to be a barn burner. Not every race is going to be the best race you've ever seen. That's how this works. You need races like this so that we can appreciate the truly good races. Every race can't be spectacular. So that's why I really don't have an issue with a race like this. Sure, this was boring. There, <laughs> this was probably one of the more boring races I've seen in a while. There wasn't a lot happening. There was a little bit happening, and we'll talk about that, but not a whole lot there. So first off, let's look at the caution report. There were a few caution flags in this race. First one came very early at lap number four, as the 12 of D.L. Wilson ended up blowing his engine, didn't make it all the way back around to the pit road, didn't even complete a lap. He essentially blew it at the initial green flag and it took those four laps for him to get I think he was between three and four by the time he finally stalled and stopped completely but he never actually completed a full lap like that so first caution came early at lap four for D.O. Wilson stalling in three and four lap 29 Thad Moffat trying to pass I believe it was Greg Von Alst spins in turns one and two got loose underneath Von Alst that's just how the air works in these cars you get down underneath the car and it just sucks you around Wrong place, wrong time. Very disappointing for Thad Moffat because he had a very fast car today. Started third, was right up there for top three or four that entire first run until this happened. Unfortunately, not able to cap it off, but I think we were about to probably see maybe the best all-around race we've ever seen out of Thad Moffat before this happened, and unfortunately, that did not come to pass because of this. Then we went green for a little while until the competition caution, lap 51. Lap 61, Kyle Sieg spun in turns three and four from a flat tire. And lap 91, the 10 of Jason Miles spun off of turn two into the inside wall, just trying to give the, the lead lap cars that were lapping him a little extra room. And even though he was a long way away from Corey Heim, and I believe Drew Dollar was the other car that was over there, he was two lanes away from them. He was down on the bottom. They were exiting uh, right up near the wall, basically, up in the PJ1. I think it was the air. It just still sucked him around, even though he was like half throttle or whatever he was doing. But it's crazy how the air can do things like that and honestly I think that's that's a problem that the air can do things like that hopefully the next gen car fixes that on the cup side of things I don't know what arc is gonna do to fix that hopefully something is done to fix that because the air plays a little too much of a factor sometimes in these kinds of races but that's your caution report for the day we had one driver lead every lap in this race now that is the second time this season we've had a driver lead all the laps in this race and it was the same driver that led every lap in this race. Ty Gibbs led every lap in this race from the pole on his way to his fourth victory of the season. So impressive the way he's able to do this after running 300 miles and winning the Xfinity race earlier today. Ty goes out there and just like it's nothing. Ran 450 miles today, plus however much he ran in practice. Gets out of the car after the race with all the energy in the world. It was like... It was like he had just run 10 miles. Like, you would think he was ready to do 600 miles after this. It was incredible the way this doesn't even phase him. That he's able to go out and run at this level. And it's like it's nothing to him. Absolutely incredible how talented this kid is. Yes, I know he's in probably the best car in the field. I get that. I, I hear that argument. I understand that argument. But at the same time... You've got to be talented to be able to 
put that car where he does in the position that he does every single week. Not every driver can do that. You can put drivers in equipment like this. We've seen drivers in equipment, in this exact equipment, that can't do what Ty Gibbs does with this equipment. So yes, he is in the best car in the field, but you've got to be a great driver to be able to do this as well. Ty Gibbs is a great driver and he is showing that. We are just seeing the beginning of what Ty Gibbs will do in his career. This is incredible. Big shout out to Corey Heim up here in P2. This day was not a P2 day for Corey Heim and it's incredible that he was able to get back to P2. Most of the day he was running about 10th, just completely off all day, car not to his liking. I was sure this was the day Corey Heim was gonna lose the points lead, but that team fought back. Came down pit road on that final caution at lap 91. He and his all of his teammates, Drew Dollar and Parker Chase came down pit road as well. They came down, got fresh tires. Corey restarted sixth with Drew and Parker right behind him in seventh and eighth. They charged through the field on a two lap restart and got back to P2, P3, and P4. Incredible salvage to this day. If we'd had another caution with the tire difference, I really think Corey Heim would have won this race. There was just that much of a of a speed difference. He just had too much ground to, to catch up to Ty Gibbs. But that being said, great recovery and great points day for this team. A day that should have been a bad day and it wasn't nearly as bad as it should have been. That is how you win championships. Now, Ty Gibbs is also doing what you have to do to win championships and, and he just goes out there and win races. But the other way to win championships, the other factor that plays in is when you have a bad day that you salvage the best possible finish that you possibly can and that's what Corey Heim and that 20 team did today. Did they go out and win this race? No. Did they have a car that could win this race? Realistically, no. But they came back and got a solid P2 finish. And given a few more laps, might have actually won the race. Since they were able to get back to that P2 finish, he has not lost the points lead yet. So this gives them a chance to go back, regroup, hopefully improve their equipment going forward, get a refresh heading into mid-Ohio this week, and hopefully start knocking out wins again. Now, with Corey having minimal to no road course experience, I'm not sure he was supposed to do Sonoma last year on the west side, but other, and since that didn't happen, I don't think Corey has ever run a road course. I may be wrong on that. I don't think he's ever run one at the ARCA level. So Mid-Ohio might be a challenge. We know Ty Gibbs can run road courses. He won the Daytona road course for his first Xfinity win. So we know Ty can do it. So Corey's going to have to be on top of his game at Mid-Ohio with very little, if any, road racing background. It's going to take a lot of eye racing time this week, I would imagine. So Mid-Ohio is going to be crucial and if they continue to lose points at mid-ohio it's gonna start looking a little dire for them are they out of it yet no by no means are they even even if they run bad at mid-ohio they're not because uh, we do get a couple weeks off for the main arca series after mid-ohio hopefully give them a little more chance to reset and hopefully come back stronger than ever but if Ty Gibbs continues to knock out win after win after win, there's not much Corey can do unless he starts winning races as well. Because if this is what's going to happen every week, if Ty Gibbs is going to go out and just knock out win after win after win, Corey's going to have to answer back with win after win after win. And right now, if today is any indication, I'm not sure Corey's got the car to do that right now. I still believe Corey has the driving talent to be able to do that, but I'm not convinced he's got the car under him right now to be able to do that. Venturini Motorsports has lost a little bit over the past couple seasons. It all started when they integrated the, the K&N series into ARCA and brought the K&N cars over and started using them at the ARCA level. Venturini hasn't quite been the same since then, and they've got to start figuring things out if they really want to give Corey the cars that he deserves to be able to contend for this championship, because right now, it doesn't seem like they're giving him those kind of cars. Drew Dollar came home in third. Parker Chase, his first oval start, came home in the fourth position with Nick Sanchez rounding out the top five. Nick Sanchez was fast today. Had a tire going flat over those last couple laps. His left rear was going flat, um, and that's ultimately why the Venturini cars got around him on the last lap. He was holding them off at the white flag, even with the fresh tires, and he really started to feel those effects of that flat tire in the last lap and had to let them go just to keep the car underneath him. Still, fantastic run from Nick Sanchez. We're seeing improvement out of Nick Sanchez every single week at this point, and I'm really starting to believe Nick Sanchez 
might win a race by the end of the season. Ty Gibbs might have something to say about that. But I think if he continues on this trajectory of improvement every week, I think Nick Sanchez can win a race by the end of the season, if not multiple. Jack Wood, same thing. Jack Wood, late in this race, had speed comparable to that 18 car of Ty Gibbs. Unfortunately, spun his tires on the last restart and never got the shot at Ty Gibbs on that final restart. Had to settle for the sixth position, but we're seeing speed out of Jack Wood as well, especially on these mile and a halfs. Jack Wood's another one I think quite possibly could win a race by the end of the season. He's really starting to show a lot of speed. Thad Moffat, we already talked about it. Disappointing finish on the day in seventh. Should have been a lot better than that. He was so fast in the beginning of this race and in the combined practice qualifying session. Seventh was all he could muster after that early spin. Dave Mater in his first start since his runner-up finish at Talladega came home in eighth. Andy Jankowiak also returning. He came home in a respectable ninth place finish and Chris Hacker first top 10 of his career came home in 10th 11th through 20th another strong run for Jason Kitzmiller on the day in the top 10 at a couple different points and ended up settling into the 11th position Kyle Sieg even after his spin in the middle of the race came home one lap down in the 12th position Greg Von Alst 14th not indicative of the day Greg Von Alst had in fact he was as high as third at one point He'd, he he might have gotten up to second at one point I don't think he got to second I think third was as high as he got. Still, super fast day for Greg Von Alst. Unfortunately, had some mechanical or engine issues of some sort late in this race and was relegated a couple laps down while on pit road fixing those issues, which was very disappointing. As again, very fast day for Greg Von Alst, and it makes me hopeful for the rest of the season when he shows up that he actually might be able to uh, run up there with the front runners. Honestly, I was not expecting that out of that 35 team at the beginning of the season, and they have been a very pleasant surprise so far. They've shown speed every time they've shown up this year. Max Gutierrez is another disappointing run for him. I believe this was his first time on a big track like this, and he was pretty quick today. I believe as high as sixth at one point, maybe even fifth, and unfortunately had a flat tire, I believe it was, late in the race and ended up in the 15th position, three laps down. Disappointing into the day, but really showed a lot of speed, and I think, I think Max Gutierrez is finally really showing us what he can do in that 30 car. Tony Bridinger came home in the 20th position, 11 laps down. Final page 21st through 23rd, three fast track cars, Jason Miles, Tony Costantino, D.L. Wilson. That's your results from the General Tire 150. We'll see what we can come up for interviews this week. Again, trying not to overload you with Ty Gibbs interviews at this point, so probably not going to get him this week. As we did just talk to him at the track at Toledo after he won there, and then we'll be at Mid-Ohio this weekend. Not, not really predicting a Ty Gibbs win there, but if he does win again, that's three weeks in a row at least we would have him, so trying to not overload you with that, but we'll see what we can come up with. Uh, some possible interviews for you this week from this race to get some folks' thoughts on this race. Let's take a look at your point standing six races into the 2021 Arkham Menards Series season. Corey Heim still leads the points. It's now a 10-point gap over Ty Gibbs as we head into mid-Ohio. That lead is shrinking. I believe it was 17 points last week was the gap, and it is now 10 points, which is actually amazing given that Corey has two wins on the season and Ty has the other four. Ty has twice the wins and is still not ahead of Corey in points. Now, most of that is due to the Talladega wreck that Ty was involved in and Corey being in the top five in every race that he hasn't won. So there's definitely some consistency there as well that is playing a factor in this. But as I mentioned in the, in the results, that 20 team has, has really got to step up their performance. We know how good Corey Heim is. We know that he can go out here and win races. I really think that that car is letting him down a little bit right now. I, I truly believe he, talent-wise, is very close to Ty Gibbs. And it's, I think, a lot of the, the, the reason Ty Gibbs is getting the better of him right now is the equipment difference. If that equipment difference can, can be shortened up a little bit here, I think we're going to have a really, really good championship battle down to the end of the season. But if not, we're going to continue to see Ty slowly chip away at that lead until he takes it and then slowly build it from there. That Venturini Motorsports team has got to really step up the equipment game here going forward. And I don't mean to just, just drag Venturini Motorsports through the mud. That's not my intention here. They're a great team, always have been. But right now, they're getting 
outclassed by Joe Gibbs Racing in what essentially should be about the same equipment given that they're both Toyotas, both in the JGR pipeline. Essentially, you would think it would be relatively the same equipment, but yet the 18 car is outclassing those Venturini cars right now. So they've got to find some way. I, I have faith that they will find a way to, to get Corey back into position to start winning races again, but th they need to do it sooner rather than later. Otherwise, Ty Gibbs is going to leave him in the dust at this rate. Nick Sanchez moves up to the fourth spot this week in points, continuing his slow climb back into that points battle. He is back above Drew Dollar now. D.L. Wilson has moved up to the sixth position now, as he is the only other driver to have run every race this season. Overall, though, not a lot of changes within the top ten this week, other than the, the points lead shoring up just a tad bit. But that's your point standings following the General Tire 150, and I believe that will do it for us on this week's Arkham Menard Series Rewind show. Again, Mid-Ohio coming up this week. We will be at the track, so of course, at the track coverage. Um, now that we have the mic, the audio is better. We're cutting out the background noise. The interviews sound better. Um, and then, of course, we'll have maybe a few other things that we're doing from the track as well. Again, if we can get to a thousand subscribers, the live stuff will start rolling out. I mean, because I have ideas that I want to do for stuff like that, but most of them don't work as a pre-recorded video. So you're not going to really see any of it until the live streams are available. I would like to do some of it, but it just doesn't really make any sense as a pre-recorded video, or at least as much sense as it does as a live video. You know what I mean? So that's what we've got coming down the pike here. Hopefully we'll hit a thousand subscribers soon so we can start really ramping up that at the track coverage. We seem to be stuck at about 860 subscribers right now. So um, if you can help us out there, if you're not subscribed yet and you like what you see, uh, consider hitting that subscribe button and hopefully we'll get to that thousand subscriber mark sooner rather than later. But iRacing coming up on Tuesday, working on a couple driver possibilities for that one. Nothing 100% uh, set in stone just yet. Um, if nothing else, we'll have the final AI race for that truck season at Daytona, but I would like to have a driver on this week just working out logistics um, as to who we could possibly have this week. So keep an eye out for that. Always a fun time on iRacing this week. Hopefully you enjoyed Travis Braden this past week. That was a fun one for me. He was uh, super fun to have on there. We'll definitely have him on again at some point in the future. But I think that's about it for tonight. So thank you as always to our Patreon supporter, Regional Manager William Holmes. Thank you as always for your support. It's greatly appreciated. If you want to be a patron of RNN, the link is down below in the description, patreon.com slash racing news now. It's not required by any means. It's really not, but it is appreciated when you want to support RNN in that way. But that's gonna about do it for us on this Arca Rewind show. So at that, this has been the Arkham Menard Series Rewind Show. I'm Garth Allen for Racing News Now.